Hello everyone, so the start of yet another project. Uh, on a previous video I mentioned this set of rules O group and said how I'd uh, seen a few bat reps and explanatory videos on YouTube and the game play really um, entertains me with this particular set of rules so I wanted to uh, obtain the rules and paint up some armies and play it. Now um, my initial taste would probably be the Eastern Front, uh, 50, 15 mil armies, uh, German and a Russian army and play the rules with that but I haven't got any suitable figures in my lead mountain and I don't want to add to my lead mountain any more than I possibly can whilst I have suitable figures in it that I can use so um, I've gone for a different theatre and from the distant past I've extracted from my lead mountain a lot of unpainted figures for North Africa. Um, now in particular um, when Flames of War first came out I think um, I thought I might indulge myself in uh, in it and I got hold of this box set of an Africa Corps Panzer Grenadier Company um, managed to paint up the three tanks and then um, put it to one side because um, I think something else happened at the time that got me uh, diverted and uh, the the, uh, the actual games that I took part in at the club were okay but um, you know they they didn't really do a lot for me. I think O Group is going to be far more uh, of interest to me. Uh, but anyway, I put it to one side. Um, I painted up three tanks that I'll show you in a moment. And um, this got put to the back of a cupboard. And over the years, um, I was rummaging through the cupboard, um, trying to find something else. And um, these boxes are really uh, flimsy from Battlefront and uh, oh by the way I don't think this box set is available anymore I've have I've looked on their website and because the rules have changed so much over the years I I'm not even sure Flames of War is any longer a company level game I don't know I don't uh, yeah I don't know but this this is a really nice interesting set of uh, vehicles and figures and um, they don't seem to offer it anymore but yeah, over the years, um, I was trying to find something else. The box, the quality of the box was beginning to deteriorate and I moved it and absolutely the entire contents slipped out of one end onto the floor. Um, basically inside the box were four uh, compartmented trays like this. Two of them burst open, the figures went everywhere. Some of the resin models were damaged um, couldn't you know it was an impossible task to really sort them back out into their appropriate compartments and so on so I just thought oh, I'll do that on another another day put everything into a carrier bag to keep them all together and then that's how they ended up in my lead pile um, but as I say I did manage to paint up these three tanks so I'll show you those briefly not terribly happy with my paint job on them but they will do for the time being give you a, a very quick look at those um, just to say that's my that's my start at the moment on what I've got ready to play. Um, oops, sorry, I'm to go the other one out. 
so um, in terms of reference material let's carry on I have got uh, two Osprey books inevitably this one's for the British Army for the opposition when I get round to painting that up um, yeah so I've got those um, I'm you know I'm painting I have got some figures painted that I'm going to show you later but um, I'm not claiming that um, I've painted them accurately or with the appropriate colours or anything like that I'm kind of winging it a little bit another kind of reference source that I can use is this uh, campaign book handbook for North Africa from Battlefront for the Flames of War set of rules. Um, again, I think this is well past its sell by date in terms of the rules having changed and everything, but there are plenty of um, photographs and illustrations um, in here that will give me a better kind of idea of the appropriate colour schemes and so on to use. And on that respect as well at the time I bought this uh, paint set um, which has got some you know uh, seasonal paints in it plus um, these these pictures here and um, you know the relevant paints that you can use so I'm pretty well set up in terms of having got the figures and the paints so i've just got to put the two together um and you know i've got sort of rough knowledge of what i'm doing in terms of the you know the, the color schemes and so on um so as on top of that at the same time um i did paint up three Crusader tanks. Now these are from a different company. They're not Battlefront um, for Flames of War. These are from Old Glory and they're part of their command decision um, range. So I have those painted. And from my lead mountain, you can guess what's coming. Um, I have a massive bag, absolutely round full of unpainted command decision figures and vehicles for North Africa. Now, so this is this is my whole problem, and this is why I'd, it's not a problem in a way. And I'm quite happy now to, that I've got all this, and uh, I can get going without having to outlay any money on um, on yet more figures. Um, but this is the problem: I cannot buy any Eastern Front figures whilst I've got this huge pile to get through it's just it's just crazy I've got to discipline myself and get this done first of all um, so in here I've not only got British figures I have got a lot of the Africa core range um, I noticed also that when I was looking through this earlier the uh, Deutsche Africa core rifleman Africa core command um, this is a group of Matilda tanks for the British. This is Africa Corps heavy machine guns, um, German artillery tractors, Africa Corps tank crews. <laughs> right now, in terms of the British, some of these packs are actually described as desert rats. So there you go, that's perfect. You know, they, these are all carrying light machine guns. So this is going to be perfect for the British forces. But um, I've got a lot of these bags that just say uh, things like British Command. So 
I have a feeling, you know, that I would be able to use a lot of these if I wanted, a, say, a you know, a sort of Normandy British force or something like that. Looking at them, they don't appear to be in desert kind of trop tropical. Oh, I don't know actually. He said that. Yeah, I'll, oh no, no, I'll have to examine them later, but I'm not sure whether these are actually, some of these have got shorts or not, or whether they're wearing coats and jackets. But I think, I think these would probably be of much use for a second army for the Western Front rather than North Africa. Um, that's Africa Corps. But in, in here, I have got quite a lot, you see, that says Desert Rats, so that's specifically for North Africa. German Riflemen, Desert Rats Heavy Machine Guns, Africa Corps, some 88mm German anti-tank guns, some Bren, Universal Carriers, now again they'd, they'd be alright for the desert but um, you know they would have been alright for the Western Front as well. Um, this is just says CDDR Rifleman Pack. So I have got an old catalogue here. Uh, so CDDR2 Rifleman Pack. Ah, uh, yeah, it comes under. It is Eighth Army Rifleman Pack. So, that, so even though it doesn't actually say Desert Rats on it, it comes under the heading of Desert Rats in here. So yeah, this is, forget what I said a moment ago, this is all appropriate for the desert. I've got some 25 pounder field guns and some Desert Rats riflemen. So there is enough there, um, I would hope, to um, put together two forces for um, o group set in North Africa um, without me having to purchase any more figures um, so I'm not going to show you any more unpainted figures out of this box set um, they are really as I said earlier though they are it's a really nice box set I'm really pleased that I've got it it's just unfortunate that I managed to um, scatter it to the four winds when I when I dropped it but i um, just going to turn the camera off for a moment now um, set things up and show you the little bit of uh, completed work that I've done actually no before I do that I just want to talk a little bit about terrain um, so I have quite a lot of generic desert terrain anyway I've got mats I've got uh, 15 mil palm trees I've got uh, sort of sand dune looking type uh, you know hills and things like that um, and on top of that I have um, printed out and have uh, have got still to print out on a 3d printer a lot of uh, appropriate um, terrain both both in terms of rocky outcrops and things but also in terms of North African buildings and so on that are going to be perfect um, even things like the El Alamein uh, railway station, stuff like that, but other kind of more generic Arab type dwellings and things. Um, I've also got in my pile of unpainted stuff um, this group of buildings from Total Battle Miniatures, which I think is absolutely fantastic. Um, I got these fairly recently, about a year ago. I'm thinking that I might use them for um, AK-47, but they're going to come in perfect for North Africa. So with, um, I, I've extolled the virtues of Total Battle Miniatures in the past, but if you're not familiar with them, um, often they sell their figures with these sort of templated, um, I don't know what it is, uh, sort of rubbery type of material, um, areas on them so um, this is basically a, a kind of walled town area or something like that um, each 
building that they do um, is made to a sort of specific shape and footprint so you can take these out and replace them with another building in their range of the same dimensions um, so this one is a sort of walled compound area which is really lovely um, this one here is a hotel um, now this one comes with uh, canopies and so on that go over the windows on the, at street level that I'll have to glue on um, but you know look at the lovely I forget what they call these things but I have got some STL files of these things they're 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 sort of decorated um, sort of panelled areas that go over the windows and they allow they allow kind of a cooling effect in, in the inside of the building by letting air flow through and so on um, and I could print a lot of these off at the appropriate scale to put onto my uh, buildings that I haven't have yet to print off as well but I think this is a really nice building as well and um, this, I don't think this is meant, maybe it is a small mosque. Um, not entirely sure. And as I was saying earlier, um, the buildings, you know, you can, you can take them out and change them around with other buildings. So I've also got um, this mosque which has a sort of minaret type tower that slots in like that. Um, so again, really nice detail on it. Um, I'm a big fan of Total Battle Miniatures. Um, and all these buildings, of course, as well, you don't have to have the templated area. You can just put them down on the table you know as sort of standalone items so well set up in terms of terrain as well right now i'll assemble my light box and show you the figures that i painted right then so it was a bit like putting together all the pieces of a massive jigsaw puzzle but what i'm doing is sort of taking out figures and so on and pieces and trying to identify what they might be and uh, I've got all the component parts together for this stand of uh, an 88mm anti-tank or anti-aircraft gun. Um, I think it's a really nice little item. Um, the, the base is sort of resin um, and on the base is, the, is cast the lower half of the legs or stand of the gun. Um, and then there are depressions for the figures um, and the upper part of the gun is metal um, if you were careful enough you could actually um, assemble it and paint it so that the gun you know will move will pivot up and down so it, you could turn it into an anti-aircraft gun but it was too much of a task really because obviously there's a danger of paint flaking off and chipping when you do move it so I just settled for painting in this position as well as the fact that I didn't assemble it entirely carefully and uh, it's a little bit off off kilter pointing in one direction so it sort of scrapes against one part of the gun shield um, and as I said earlier um, I'm going on you know what I can see in terms of um, illustrations in the book and on the on the packet and so on and my paint set that I've been using but I'm fairly happy with the colors um, you know the desert's going to fade everything to a sort of uh, bleached color anyway um, so I started off with the yellow green I think it's 881 because the, the original kind of tropical uniform colour is a sort of tropical olive green sort of colour um, and then apparently it would fade either to a sort of brown or greyish colour so from there on I took it up with various um, you know sort of colours. Oh the one thing I did use 
you know, outside of the the battlefront of the Stroke Vallejo range was um, some antithesis paints, which from war colour, I think it was called yellow ochre. Um, so there's a very kind of subliminal use of contrast paints in there as well. Um, but yeah, I'm really happy with that. It's looking looking pretty good for 15 mil, I think. Right, so let's change things over. So not much else. I have got a lot of individual figures painted, um, but not based yet um, because I want to sort of put them into their appropriate groupings and so on. Um, so this will represent one section of a platoon. So there's in the O group rules there are three sections to a platoon, three platoons to a company basically. I think that's right. Uh, yeah, I think that's right. And then the thing is a battalion level game, so you get you end up um, with three companies to the battalion. I might be wrong in that, don't take my word for that. Um, in terms of the base sizes, they're fairly um, flexible. So I just went with a lot of uh, this particular size base because I had a lot of them around. But in the rule book, they tend to, and on the website, on the YouTube as well, I've seen people tend to base three to a, a base and then um, have a smaller base. Um, but as I say, I, I have got some smaller bases, but I'm trying to hold them back for other projects. So I use these and then I've got one more group like that. In a group rules with um, Panzer Grenadier sections. Each section is given two machine guns apparently. Um, again, haven't read the rules too carefully so again don't quote me on that but um, it's difficult to kind of uh, marry up what you get with the Battlefront box set with what's required in O-Group. But yeah, off to, off to a good start, and as I say, I have got a fair amount of painted figures up, um, just waiting for the appropriate base to come along for me to put them on, so it um, shouldn't take me too much longer to uh, paint a few more figures up and begin to get a little bit of a force assembled, but I'm not going to try, you know, try and rush it, because... Um, I've got so much, there's loads of other things that I haven't been revealing to you. Um, they're not so much secrets as sort of dirty secrets, really guilty secrets really. Um, I just can't resist the temptation of other projects, especially with the 3D printer, it's just opening up um, so many other possibilities. So I've already uh, spoken to you earlier about my uh, fantasy Age of Magic project um, so because I want to take part in this uh, little legions and Leon T66's challenge but um, that might have to take priority for the next sort of month or two just because there's a deadline to it um, and then I've got everything else on the go like the Culloden project and uh, my Bojess which is still on my painting top still there I'm sort of rotating through it anyway that's brief announcement of my next project. Uh, thanks very much for watching. See you on the next video. Bye for now.